Hello, my name is Sharda Agarwal. I am a functional nutrition therapy practitioner and co-founder of Sepalika, a chronic health platform. We are in extraordinary times right now. You're stuck to the house, working from home. Children are in the house, not allowed to step out. Shops are open, but grocery and vegetables are very limited. So in such times, how and what should we be eating? Now remember, even if you're otherwise healthy, you were never prepared for a time like this. And therefore, each of us needs to make some change. The human body needs normalcy or homeostasis, but unfortunately there's nothing normal today. So what I'm going to do is to take you through some very simple yet effective diet ideas with whatever you have at home to strengthen your body and to build your immunity. Our body is experiencing two big changes today. The first is the constant fear, worry, anxiety that's coming from the coronavirus. Each of us are on 10 different WhatsApp groups and each group is throwing out conflicting and confusing information, minute by the minute by the second. And therefore our body is in a constant flight or fight, fight or flight mode. So the first thing in such a situation the body does is to shut down or downregulate digestion. Why? Digestion is the largest consumer of energy in the body. And when your body is in that fight or flight state, its only job is to protect you and cut out all unnecessary physiological functions of which digestion is among the first. The second big change that each of us is going through is that we're all at home, which means there is a significant drop in physical movement and consequently a need for that energy. We're not even walking to a car, to the school bus stop to drop our kids or to the store. Our morning walks have stopped or almost disappeared. There is no gym. So why do we need to eat as much now as we did then? So my focus today is on, on this video is to give you ideas to nourish and protect yourself. And also, I'll let me raise a red flag just now that it's also very easy to put on weight unknowingly and I want you to avoid that. So what are we going to do when you're at home? Number one, eat nutrient-dense foods. By nutrient-dense foods, it means foods where each spoonful or mouthful gives you the maximum amount of nutrition into the body. Number one is vegetables with whatever is available at home or in the market. That doesn't matter. The more green or colorful they are, the better it is. If possible, at least two vegetables in a meal. Veggies are complex carbohydrates. They're great for energy, they contain vitamins, and they give us minerals. The second thing is to get protein into your meal every day. You need proteins to fight infection. You need them to build your antibodies. You need protein to build your hemoglobin. So ensure that each meal has dal, rajma, vegetables, chicken. Now remember, chicken is not, this is not the bird flu, and therefore, as of date, there's no data that chickens can transmit the virus, so chicken is safe. The third is to get good fats into the body. Yes, I know you're sitting at home all day, but fats don't make you fat. Fats are a dense source of energy, which we, and this is energy that we're draining with all the stress we have today. Fats have almost 2.25 times more than, more energy than carbohydrates or food, proteins, which means they can keep you satisfied longer. So if you have dry fruit at home, like badam, cashew nuts, walnuts, please have them. Do add ghee to your rice and roti and butter to your toast, which may, takes me to rice and roti. Now, these are the two most important things that are on any Indian meal, but they send simple carbohydrates, which means they cause a rapid drop in blood sugar. When you're working from home and you continue to sit right after a meal and you don't move, you're likely to feel this drop in blood sugar even more, which means you're most likely to be more sleepy. What can you do? Reduce the amount of rice or roti that you're eating. I'm not asking you to starve. Just make it up by increasing quantity of dal or sabzi. And an even better idea is to swap the rice or roti for millets like najni, juar or amaranth. I would have asked you to add bajra, but we're almost, summer is almost here and bajra is very warming to the body. Another important point I want you to note is that your dinner should be light. Ayurveda says that our digestive fire is the highest at noon time and it wanes afterwards. So when we are staying at home, the digestion process is likely to be dropping or it's likely to be even lower, which means you're not burning enough calories. My recommendation is to have just a soup and a sabzi or two sabzis for dinner and avoid the grain if you can. Every Indian home is stocked with spices or masalas. We all know that turmeric, garlic, ginger, cinnamon, cloves are fantastic for health. But in times like this of the coronavirus, they play a stellar role. Spices are high in antioxidants, the guys who fight the bad ones in the body. They are anti-inflammatory. And you may know that haldi, for example, helps release mucus. So how can we have spices? Sip on a ginger tea, which is hot, let's say hot or warm. I've given up my regular morning tea and I now start the day with a herb tea where I boil plenty of crushed ginger, pudina or mint and lemongrass and strain and drink this. It is super energizing and a great pick me up. And I know that I have a, the good stuff getting into my body first thing in the morning. 
Another way to use spice is to sip on cinnamon flavored water and I'll tell you more of this a little later in this video. Now I'd like to recommend that you make Indian or Desi soups with spices. Just fry you know, cinnamon, ginger, garlic, jaifal in a pan, add tomatoes, whatever vegetables that you have in your kitchen, boil it till it's cooked and then top it up with some salt. It's a clear soup. If you want a thick soup, you can just beat it up in a mixie and have it. Now, when we have limited grocery at home, the smartest thing to do is to make one pot meals. They're nutritious and they're super convenient. You can make khichdi with vegetables. Just keep rotating the dals, whether it's chana, tur, moong. You can have chicken and rice at home. You can make a nice spicy bisi bile bath. That's the sambar rice and vegetable combination from Karnataka. Get the goodness of a millet pulao or some you know, protein in with a kala chana pulao. I always feel that Indians should make more and more and make their cooking simpler with opting for more and more one pot meals. The 5 p.m. hunger, of course, is the biggest villain and it's worse when everybody is at home. And with the kids, the task of you know, meeting this hunger need, it becomes even more challenging. But it's also the time when we succumb to pakoras or the onion bajiyas, but please just avoid them. We now focus is to build immunity. There are several healthy options. Now, it's okay to have fried foods as a treat once in a while, but don't make it as a regular habit. Avoid biscuits, however easy they seem, because all they have is maida, butter, and sugar. If you have leftover chapati from lunch, make khakras out of them. Take peanuts or boiled chana, add some chaat masala, toss it with onions and tomatoes, and have a, a snack. For kids, you can give them fruit and dahi or cheese cubes with some nuts to just make it exciting. One big caution in this time, please do not drink cold water. Do not lower your immunity by letting something stress your throat or your respiratory system, even if that water is from the refrigerator, which is where it's filtered. And here's another important point I want to raise, which is about avoiding putting on weight when you're housebound. Take a hundred steps after each meal in the house, around the dining table, room to room, in the corridor, and around your bed if you're just quarantined to a room. You need to move to what, or to get, you need to move and get away the food that you've just eaten. Okay. Also, when you're stressed, don't eat. And first ask yourself, am I really hungry? Am I bored? If you're working from home, keep a bottle of flavored water next to you. Flavor it with lemon, with pudina, with a slice of orange. This will keep you from reaching out for the namkeen at the, you know, at the table. Now, many of us experience sugar craving, but when we are at home, it's very easy to succumb to it. The kitchen is within our reach, but sugar raises blood sugar and sugar is inflammatory. At a time when our focus should be on building the body's immunity, sugar is a villain, so please keep away from sugar. Sip on cinnamon flavored water through the day. What you need to do is to infuse your bottle of water with a stick of cinnamon. This water has a sweet taste without the downside of sugar. You can even sip on green tea after a meal. Chew really well on a teaspoon of sauf or fennel seeds after a meal and it works brilliantly for me. And if you're still, you know, crazy with that craving, have a small piece of dark chocolate or a jaggery chiki. Just one piece, but please no mithai. At Sepalika, we believe food is medicine. And in such vulnerable times, this is what each of us can do, which is to use food to protect ourselves. I will sign off with one advice that I give each and every client we work with. Five deep belly breaths before each meal. In, out. In, out. Because what happens is that this gets your body in a parasympathetic state, which means the food that you eat gets absorbed and di get digests and gets absorbed better. Stay safe. Stay calm. Thank you.